Well, for more on the quash coup, we can speak to political researcher from the CETA Foundation, Enes Birakli, who joins me live in the studio. We know, um, Enes, that the uh, exile, Fatula Gulen, um, is currently in um, the US. What sort of impact will uh, the, Turkey have with the United States in terms of relationship? We know, obviously, that they have issued extradition papers for his uh, send to be brought back over here. I mean, this has a huge impact because what we have been through in the last uh, seven days and this coup attempt and the many civilians were killed, this is uh, not acceptable here in Turkey. And I don't think that the United States really has understood uh, the, the seriousness of the issue. You know, they are still playing with, the, with the, uh, a game with Turkey and saying, yeah, send us the proofs, etc. Okay, the proofs will be sent. But the, it's so obvious that the Gulen is the behind this coup attempt in but Turkey. But for any extradition order, you need evidence. And without evidence, the US is not going to release him. Yes, the evidence is sent. I mean, there are thousands of evidence now in Turkey. I mean, the evidence is sent. But however, the reaction from the United States in the, in the first uh, uh, hours of the coup, there was no strong reaction. After uh, the, the um, foreign minister, uh, uh, Kerry, has said that uh, you know, Turkey might be you know, uh, expelled from the NATO, etc., these kind of uh, statements were so uh, unfortunate for the United States, I think. And now there is a, a strong suspicion that the United States had something to do with this coup attempt in Turkey. There is a strong belief now in Turkey. But the U.S. Has, has categorically denied it has no... Uh, had, had no part of the coup whatsoever. OK, but then... We that, is, to... that has been on record by the US Secretary of State, John yes, Kerry. Yes, so, but then we need to look at the facts. I mean, the facts are there. After the coup attempt, there was an orchestrated media campaign towards Turkey to dehumanise the democracy fighters on the street, OK, by the Western media, especially United States media, by the think tank world and, and the politicians. So if you look at the Gulen movement, you know, they, are highly, uh, they were highly effective in Turkey, in bureaucracy, in media, etc. And the guy is living in the United States for about 15 years now. So if the United States says that their intelligence services does not have no clue about this coup attempt, you know, that a cleric is living there, he's been, he has been protected by the United States for about 15 years now, and, and Turkey is a strategic NATO ally, a coup attempt is happening in Turkey, and the United States does not have no clue about it, I mean, it's an insult to our intelligence, our logic, and it's not acceptable. Sure, but OK, it was a big failure. OK, we do understand it. It was a big failure. Actually, it is the, one of the biggest foreign policy failures of the Obama administration. We need to say this. But they need to come to their senses and start, they need to start thinking rationally because a chaos in Turkey is not going to help anybody. And that's what we are doing, uh, seeing now after the coup attempt. There is a strong campaign towards Turkey, and if there is a step instabilization in Turkey, destabilization in Turkey, political crisis, and uh, from this crisis, will only terrorist organization will benefit from this, like ISIL, you know. Well, let's talk about stability within Turkey. I want to talk first of all about the military and then about the economy. The coup attempt was quashed. Um, you managed to get back a stability within the country. The the president and the prime minister have both said that a state of emergency has been declared and that allows them to have better power to be able to safeguard, they say, their citizens and to be able to have more power to arrest people and fast track um, procedures without going through parliament, so to speak, when it comes to the <coughs> armed forces. But how much time and effort is needed, do you think, to make the public feel secure? I think it will take a little bit time. Why we, that's why we need this state of emergency, because Gulen movement has been infiltrating Turkish state institutions for a long time now. It's almost, it has been almost 50 years. And in 50 years' time, you can build another state. And that's why it is called parallel state within a state, Turkish state. We have seen that they have pilots, they have uh, tanks, they have personnel, they have intelligence uh, in, the, in the intelligence services. That's why maybe there was a dismissed communication between the head of the intelligence service in Turkey and the president because it was, uh, it was um, stopped this communication between them. So, in order to uh, you know clear these people from Turkish state institutions, we need time, and that's why we need these extra measures in Turkey. But this uh, um, state of emergency is not directed against Turkish people. I mean, the, the today Prime Minister has said it's a state of emergency for the state. 
You know, state has declared a state of emergency towards itself. Well, it's a, a state of emergency against anyone that threatens the state. Yes, but basically these people are in the, in, the, in the state institutions. You know, they have hijacked the state institutions, military, police power, etc., and they use it against the people. Okay, okay. and as uh, Beirakli, I'm afraid we have to leave it there. We're out of time. Right. Next time Thank we'll talk you. about the economy. Thank you.